Friends, in today's video, we're going to be going over some spicy, fun, and effective tank builds that you can use in the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion for New World. Now, this update brought in some pretty fun updates for making builds in the game. Uh, first and foremost, we have a level cap increase going to 65. We also have a gear score increase going up to 700. Because of that, uh, and also because of the new food buffs that we can get, which gives us now uh, 48 stats, you can get about roughly 100 extra stats than what we've previously had for the longest time in the game so 100 extra points to play around with is quite fun uh, we also have the introduction of artifact weapons armor and jewelry as well which creates some really fun and cool build rounds and um, some very unique play styles so we're going to be covering two different builds in this video breaking down the attributes the weapon mastery the armor and uh, the gems and all that good stuff now one thing i do want to say before we get any further into this video is this was recorded on the ptr so you can see up in the top right ever so faintly uh, uh, we are on the public test realm so this was recorded about two weeks before the update went to live on the test server some things might be a little bit different than what they are on live if there are some drastic changes to the build i will sort of either outline them in the pinned comments down below here on youtube or I will uh, potentially make you guys an updated video, which again, we'll have a link down below. But in theory, most of what we talk about in this video should be effective when it goes to live with the Rise of the Angry Earth. But I just wanted to let you guys know a quick note sort of there. So let's jump in with our first build here. This is the classic sort of sword and board. So we have a sword and shield and we have a Warhammer tanking build. The stats that we're gonna be rocking for this build is 300 strength and 300 constitution. Again, we have a, quite a few extra points to play around with here. If you do have any excess points, you can go ahead and put them into strength or potentially even drop a few into dexterity if you can get up to 25 dexterity then we get the five percent critical hit chance which is quite nice and it also benefits the sword and shield but we really want to be at 300 con for this one to get the basic melee attacks gain grit now i will say um, some of these builds are not going to be super 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 optimized you know if you're looking into like speed running and trying to hit the leaderboards and get like the top score in the world and stuff there's probably going to be like you know uh, things that you can change differently but what we wanted to do here is have fun and create a build that works in almost every scenario so you should be able to use this build in dungeons in pvp in open world uh in questing you name it so 300 strength 300 con at the attributes that we're looking at when we hop over to weapon mastery we're going to be rocking whirling blade fully up Upgraded for the cooldown reduction shield rush going down one point to get the uh, sort of aoe weaken here and then defenders resolve one one point down to get the uh, damage reduction as well and then i have opted to pick up the leadership because i think with 300 constitution heavy armor tower shield you guys will see we're pretty good when it comes to um damage reduction if you really really want to just be like an unkillable rock then you can go defensive formation and you know pick up uh, restoration pick up intimidating rush and stuff like that uh, but i would recommend that picking up leadership because again you, you're kind of covered on the the defense side so giving a little bit of damage to yourself and your teammates is going to help out there when we move over to the warhammer skill tree we've got mighty gavel maxed out to pick up justice for all which means we have to pick up quite a few passives on the left side of the tree some of these are good some of them not so much but uh, we also have the clear out ability uh, with one upgrade to get the aoe fortify and then we have shockwave uh, fully maxed out to get the extended duration and we picked up a few passives over here that are going to increase our damage and give us a little bit of a uh, sustain and healing as well now going over to the gear that i've been using in this build we'll start off with the artifacts first because they are the most exciting thing and i will make a quick note if you guys are curious about these artifacts and where you can get them from at the end of the video we'll have a little section that explains you know um, where you can get every artifact that we're going to use in this build guide uh, we'll have a little breakdown of the mobs that you can farm to get them uh, but the first weapon we're taking a look at here is our warhammer and this is the spark of mjolnir now for those of you not familiar uh, the way that they've done the artifacts is you can basically have one of your weapon slots as an artifact one of these five or six armor slots interestingly enough the shield does count as armor and not a weapon that might change but yeah one slot over here can be an artifact one over here can be an artifact and one in your jewelry can be an artifact so our artifact warhammer is uh, Mjolnir's Blessing, or Spark of Mjolnir, sorry, I was taking a look at the reading ahead, uh, which says 99% of the Warhammer damage is converted to lightning, and you deal 20% more lightning damage with both weapons. Now, sadly, we can't really build around this too much. I think if you want to really lean into the lightning aspect, you might want to go with like, some points on intelligence or something to get extra elemental damage. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's Like I said, it's got some cool theme with it. Um, one of the most overpowered perks on this is the Spark. It says Mighty Gavel, and they spelled it wrong here, but cause is a lightning strike that deals 50% uh, weaken for seven seconds. So 50% weaken is basically the enemy is going to do 50% less damage. This can land on multiple enemies at the same time. 
And uh, it, that is the cap. That's the weakened cap right there, which is really bonkers. It also has refreshing Mighty Gavel baked in as well and refreshing move, so we can get a lot of cooldown reduction. Um, on this particular one, I had a different perk. There was another perk down here, so you'll see this with some artifact weapons. We can find an example here. Um, like Pestilence, for example, it has Mortal Lifesteal down at the bottom, but you can change the perk if you take it to a Gypsum Kiln. And again, we'll show that at the end of the video if you guys are curious about how to change perks on your artifact. But we actually changed one of the perk slots to a gem slot so we could put in an Electrified Gambit. But we'll go over gems a little bit later on in the video. Other artifacts that we're running include the Wall. This is a Tower Shield with just massive, massive damage reduction. We've got overall 5% damage reduction. You can't dodge, not that it really matters. And you have 33% more stamina. We also take 25% less damage from all elemental sources, which is really, really good for mutated dungeons and fighting mages and stuff. And then we slotted Fortifying Shield Rush on this one. Uh, previously, I think it had Accelerated Resolve, but uh, Fortifying Shield Rush, I feel like is a must have perk on the shield. Lastly, the other artifact that we have is the Lost Stopwatch. Now, this one's a bit of an interesting one. It has Stunny Gaze, so it says Activate Taunt Gem. Stuns last 100% longer, but damage is decreased by 5%. Activate Taunt Gems, um, I looked into this, and apparently the way this works is anything that has sort of Taunt Gem compatibility is immediately activated. So if we take a look at Shockwave, it says, If you have a Carnelian Gem equipped in your Warhammer, this ability inflicts Taunt for 6 seconds to all enemies hit. The same with Mighty Gavel as well. If you have a Carnelian Gem, um, hits with this ability inflict taunt for four seconds now there are other weapons in the game that also have taunt gem compatibility um, but they don't actually do an on hit effect so for example repost here it says if you have a carnelian gem equipped on your armor activating this ability inflicts taunts to all foes within five meters so from what i can learn and again they might change this the activate taunt gems sort of component of th this uh, relic artifact whatever the heck they're called here is for on hit effects and what that means is you can actually run um a just normal gem, you know, whatever gem you want in your Warhammer because it is already counting as if it has a Carnelian gem in it. Now you might be asking, well, why have you put a Carnelian gem in the sword and not in the Warhammer? And that's because with the sword, there are two different types of taunts here. Um, so we have the Shield Bash, which we're not actually running, but it says if you have a Carnelian gem equipped in your sword, this ability inflicts taunts to all enemies hit. Um, so the, the hit ability there, uh, whereas this one, it says activating this ability inflicts taunts to all enemies within eight meters. So because it doesn't actually hit them, it doesn't trigger the, the stunny gaze effect or whatever. So hopefully that makes sense. From what I can tell so far, that's how it works. So if something actually literally hits the enemy, um, then it will activate the taunt gem. But something like this, where it's just sort of like a, in the air, it's like an aura around it, that won't activate the taunt gem. So that's why we're still using a taunt gem in our sword but i thought i'd just cover that up because it is kind of confusing and it could be honestly worded quite a bit better so going back to the warhammer it's obvious now you can see why we want to run mighty gavel in this and the whole idea behind this build in fact we'll just go like demonstrate a little bit here so we're basically just looking to spam uh mighty gavel on the enemies over and over here again so we go there and then it's immediately off cooldown as you can see and again immediately off cooldown if it hits more than two enemies effectively it's just there straight away which is pretty bonkers so we can just mighty gavel all day long with this build which is pretty fun it's also applying the weaken to everybody as well reducing their damage just making it much less likely that we die one of the problems with gavel is it doesn't have a sort of um uh, what do you call it grit so you can be interrupted while you're pressing the ability which can be kind of annoying so you got to watch out for that one sometimes you can get interrupted while you're hitting the mighty gavel um, but a lot of the time it's just kind of free especially if you've got your stone form uh, heart rune up um, which you know we're kind of skipping ahead in the build here a little bit uh, but on one enemy, we can basically do a, an attack, and then we can gavel, and then we can attack, unless he blocks it. And that's effectively what we're looking to do here. We're just spamming gavel over and over and over and over and over again, because if it hits uh, two or more targets, it instantly comes off cooldown, and the only thing that's stopping you from using it again is the animation or if the enemy interrupts you. So quite a fun build. Um, that's basically the concept there. And then everything else we've just got to sort of set up and make is just a more consistent tank. So we take a look at the perks on the sword here. We have refreshing move and thwarting strikes. Thwarting strikes obviously makes quite a lot of sense because we have the 300 grip perk. Our stats are going to look a little bit scuffed here because of uh, some bugs that are happening on the test server. Um, but effectively, we should be 300, 300. And we get the basic melee attacks gain grit. So whenever we uh, sort of do an attack, you see we're going to glow white. 
So uh, we effectively always have grit as long as we're pressing left click, which is pretty cool. So um, that's a great perk to pick up on the sword with the thwarting strikes. We also have empowering whirling blade. I wasn't really sure if this is going to be a good perk, to be honest. I think you could replace this with vicious or enchanted or hated or any other perk that seems good to you. But I went with whirling blade just so we can like sort of blade into a big pack of enemies. And we also get quite a lot of cooldown reduction just sort of baked in with the ability when we take a tactical strike and then lastly i think refreshing move is kind of a must-have for tanks if you can hit into a big pack of enemies even though we're probably going to try and spend most of the time with the warhammer uh, if for whatever reason you do need to do some more traditional tanking refreshing moves is always good because you can hit multiple enemies and uh, just really lower your cooldowns quite rapidly so you can spam them back to back now taking a look at the armor you guys have got to remember that we no longer have resilient and we no longer have corrupted ward angry earth ward lost ward beast ward all of that crappy ward stuff so then what's really good about this build and most builds now in new world is you can kind of use a one size fits all so the perks that i've tried to go for on this build are grip ward we always want to have grip ward where we can um, because obviously we talked about it but when you have uh, so most of our abilities do have grip first and foremost this has grit i think this has grit as well um, whenever we do left clicks we have grit so we're gonna have a grit a lot of the time uh, and we get four percent damage while under the effects of grit and we can stack that up so four eight twelve sixteen minus twenty 20% damage reduction through grit ward. So these, this by far is the most important perk. Then next up, I opted to go for Sundering Clear Out. Now, honestly, this perk's really good and we would get it on our Warhammer if we could, but you can't add another weapon perk into uh, Spark of Mjolnir as far as I'm aware. So Sundering Clear Out to get some extra rend to the Clear Out ability seems pretty good. And then lastly, we tried to get uh, Refreshing as well. So I think the two most important picks here would be grit ward and Sundering Clear Out. And then uh, again, kind of here as well, grit ward and Sundering Shockwave makes sense. More rend makes the enemy take more damage, but Refreshing also nice to slot in there to get some extra cooldown reduction. You might need the refreshing to really get that uh, sort of mighty, yeah, mighty gavel sort of cooldown all the way down to zero when you hit two enemies. And then lastly, once we've run out of sort of weapon abilities to put on, I just went for health, grit ward, and refreshing. And then once we were capped out on refreshing because it stacks at four out of four, I just went for health, grit ward, and lightning harnessing. Now this might be a little bit too spicy. Maybe just replace this with like vigor or invigorated or... Um, something else I opted to go for slash conditioning on another pair of pants But yeah, I think you can kind of put whatever perk you want here I went for lightning harnessing just to sort of you know spice up Mjolnir a bit more and the same with our boots here We already talked about the wall I believe um, but yeah Just a just a really really strong tower shield gives you an absolute ton of stamina and the damage reduction on this thing is crazy good as well I know we can't dodge but you can actually dodge when you switch to another weapon by the way um, I don't know if they're gonna change this when it goes from test server to live But we can switch to our wall hammer and dodge if you want to going down to the jewelry we talked a little bit about the lost stopwatch this activates our taunt gems even if we don't have a taunt gem which is pretty cool we've also got purify on here health and shirking debilitate cleanse now this perk i actually do need to change at the gypsum kiln and again we'll talk about how to change perks on artifacts towards the end of the video i'd probably just replace this with some sort of protection perk one thing to be aware of when it comes to this build is this amulet isn't going to be great when it comes to mutated dungeons and uh, we'll get a little bit late i think we'll come to that when it comes to uh uh, the gem sort of section because uh, I think it'll make more sense then but effectively I would probably replace this with like fortified or um, empowered or something like that just a perk that's going to be universally good all the time moving over to the ring uh, this ring that I found here has hearty refreshing and leeching I think if you wanted to you could put strike damage on here actually it would be lightning damage wouldn't it yeah you could get the extra perk that gives you more lightning damage or you could get the perk that gives you um, slash damage as well for your sword if you wanted to lean more into the sword. Um, but hearty refreshing leeching, pretty good. And then the earring has regenerating, refreshing toast, and empowering toast. I think there is a, a different version of empowering toast called fortifying toast that maybe you want to go for as well. But as you can see, we got the 20% damage reduction from the armor, and then we have the insane damage reduction from the wall. Uh, combined with the fact the enemy is just going to be on the ground most of the time from all of our Warhammer abilities, I don't think we need too much more defensive options, so... Um, I opted for Refreshing Toast, Regenerating, and Powering Toast. One quick note, I'm not entirely sure if this is still in the game. I should have done my research, apologies, but there is a perk that you can get on your earring called Despised. Um, this used to exist prior to the expansion. I'm not sure if Despised still exists going forward, but if it does, um, getting Despised on your earring probably going to be a go-to as well. I would mainly focus on Refreshing Toast and Despised here. Um, and actually, I didn't cover it on the uh, ring as well, but if you've only got a two-perk ring, probably just Hearty and Leeching would be fine. Um, or hearty and some sort of damage modifier like hearty and lightning damage or hearty and slash damage would also be great here as well. 
Moving over to the Heart Rune, I have opted to go for the Stalwart Heart Rune of Stoneform. The main reason behind this is because I can pop it, and then I can't be interrupted, so I can just spam uh, Gavel to my heart's content, because you become, like, uh, immune to all CC, so you don't get knocked around, so you can just spam Gavel. But if you wanted to go a little bit more supportive, you could rock something like the Brutal Heart Rune of Grasping Vines. You could even look to take Detonate, although it does rend you by a lot. Um, I think the Detonate that's most popular is still the Brutal Detonate, but yeah, you rendered by 50%, which is pretty spooky. Um, I think Firestorm is also an excellent option as well. Honestly, you could kind of run whatever Heart Rune that feels good for you. Um, I would be careful about using like the Primal Fury Heart Runes though, because you can't really do any anything else while you're in Primal Fury mode. You can't be spamming your Gavel or your Taunts or anything. You just go like Monkey mode and start smashing people. So maybe no Primal Fury, but honestly, any Heart Rune I think feels good. I opted to go for the Stalwart Heart Rune of Stoneform though, just for that extra sort of survivability and, and stopping me from getting interrupted. Next thing we're gonna talk about in the build are the gems. Now gems still do sort of vary a little bit depending on what sort of content you're doing. So I've opted to go for half Malachite and half Diamond. So Malachite slotted into the armor gives us elemental and physical damage absorption. And then the Diamond gives us physical and a little bit of elemental. So we kind of sort of keep it balanced here four diamonds for mostly physical, a little bit of elemental, and then four malachites for mostly elemental and a little bit of physical. Now, as we mentioned, your gems are going to change depending on the content you're going into. So if you're doing a mutated dungeon, for example, as a tank, um, you want to pay attention to the mutation here. So eternal means lots of void damage, which means you want to be slotting amethyst into your armor. So um, amethyst in every slot. Uh, that you can get it in is going to help you and give you a lot of void damage absorption because again most of the damage is going to be void but if it's a hellfire mutation which again these mutations change every week then you want to be running mostly ruby gems and if it's uh, Icebound, I think is what it's called, then it's mostly Aquamarine for ice damage absorption. And finally, there's the Nature one, which I can't remember the name of right now, um, but that is Nature Damage Absorption, which is Ambers into your jewelry and armor. However, on the other side of things, if you're going into PvP, from what I've experienced so far, Musket, Blunderbuss, and Spear all seem to be very popular. So slotting gems that give you thrust damage absorption, because those are all like sort of thrust damage weapons, would be advantageous. And I believe the thrust uh, gem is is called an emerald so if you put some emeralds into your armor you get a lot of thrust damage absorption which will help you out and we did cover this earlier but usually on your amulet you want to get a specific protection perk as well so if you're going into um, like we have here on the test server if you're going to the savage divide and it's an eternal mutation then you want to be running um, void protection on your amulet but the thing is this is going to get expensive because changing the perks on the artifacts is not super cheap so you might want to consider not running Lost Stopwatch and instead taking a normal amulet for the protection. But I believe with 300 um, constitution, you don't actually need to get that protection perk. Uh, maybe you need to actually test how that feels out. But uh, just bear in mind that it is often seen uh, necessary for a lot of players to run a specific protection perk on their amulet. So for on the live service, for example, right now, which again is prior before the uh, expansion, um, I have a fire protection amulet a frost protection amulet, a nature protection amulet, you get the idea. So a different type of amulet for every type of mutation. And then again, for PVP, maybe you want to get a thrust protection amulet for all of those um, spears and blunderbusses. But with 300 constitution, most likely you don't need to worry too much about your specific protection other than changing the gems over. One more thing to cover before we move to our next build is the ability rotation, obviously. So I think when it comes to most opening pulls, depending on how much you have ran into, probably open with the classic Tonto Pronto with the uh, Defender's Resolve. Uh, then going in with a Shield Rush to give yourself the Fortify and also put the Weaken on the enemy. And then also do a big Whirling Blade in there to get a bit of damage. Hit them a few times with the uh, Sword to get some cooldown reduction and then we're going to switch over to the warhammer drop the shockwave to reapply a stun mighty gavel probably the clear out and then just mighty gavel mighty gavel mighty gavel as much as you can basically until your abilities look like they're about to come off on the sword and then we switch back over to the sword and sort of rinse and repeat cycle through the abilities again back over to the warhammer shockwave cheeky clear out and then mighty gavel is basically going to be your fill spam is how i imagine it now obviously you don't have to use the abilities in that exact order if you find something works better for you um then go for it but that is typically how i expect to you know open a pull with this fight and if you ever get low the wall is there to it's got you covered just bring up the block get yourself into a corner and typically 
Um, a, a tip when it comes to tanking is you want to be trying to pull the melee enemies to the ranged enemies. So if this is all the melee over here and there's an archer over there, um, if you don't have aggro on the archer and the sort of uh, defender's resolve doesn't reach to that one, then you want to make sure you pull all of the melee over to the archer and fight on top of the archer or the musket or the mage, whatever it is, um, because then you're going to keep it nice and all packed together for your DPS to, to burn them down. And you're also going to make sure you hold aggro of the range mob so they don't attack the healer. All right, moving on to build number two for our spicy tank builds of the Rise of the Angry Earth. And we have the new weapon in the game, the flail. And we are going to be using an artifact flail, of course. We're still going to be rocking the wall as our tower shield. And uh, we still have lost stopwatch as well. So most of the builders remain the same from the sword and shield and the warhammer. But we now have the flail just for something a little bit different and to uh, sort of play around with this new weapon i do think it is uh, less damage orientated but it has a lot more survivability and buffs for your team as well so if you want to play a little bit more defensive and you want to be a bit more support orientated then the flail and the warhammer are going to be good for that but obviously uh, because we have an artifact flail we can't be rocking an artifact warhammer so we will be saying goodbye to spark of mjolnir for this one moving into the stats for this build it's going to be the 300 strength 300 constitution again we are going to be rocking a, a lot of the same antrix that we had with the sword and shield warhammer however However, if you do have any spare remaining points or you do want to sort of uh, shift things up a little bit, I think it's fairly valid with this build to drop down in strength and maybe put some points into focus. So maybe stop at like 250 strength or so and get yourself to about 50 focus to get some extra incoming healing. It's going to help you as a tank and also get some ability cooldown reduction. That's also going to be pretty good as well. So 270 strength, 35 focus, 300 constitution. And of course, Magnify has messed it up because uh, we, we love Magnify. It's really, really good. <laughs> Again, hopefully they fix that before it goes to live. Now moving into the Weapon Mastery skill tree for the Flail, we have Arcane Smite. Uh, we picked up all the upgrades here because a lot of them provide extra weaken, reducing the enemy's damage. It also has a lifesteal aura as well, which is pretty cool. Um, we get a fortify when we activate it, 30% armor increase. And then we picked up the two taunts on the right-hand side of the skill tree, uh, Warding Bludgeon, which has a nice little uh, sort of tether link effect with a teammate, which is pretty cute. Um, it's also got reinforced fortify, which is, again, more damage reduction. And then Barrage, I'm not entirely sure if it's worth upgrading at all. We do get the uh, Flailia to launch some of these perk names just something else uh you get again 20 percent fortify to all allies within radius increasing armor by 20 percent for eight seconds pretty good we also have the human shield as well which is going to randomly link you to one nearby ally and you sort of inherit 50 percent of the damage they take but you only take 35 percent of that 50 percent damage so you're sort of like again reducing the overall damage the enemies do we didn't really bother taking any of the other abilities here trip is a pretty good cc um, arcane eruption and arcane vortex do have some good healing options but because we're not really focusing too much on focus as our stat for this one uh, we have just opted to go for smite for its uh your sort of utility and then our two taunts over here as well jumping over to the warhammer we have shockwave clear out and wrecking ball all fully maxed out and we've opted to go for aftershock over here to apply a little bit of slow honestly this doesn't really matter too much the the passive over here but we're not rocking mighty gavel because we don't have our fun uh, Thor's hammer anymore so wrecking ball just to knock some enemies down some people prefer to take armor breaker over wrecking ball for more um, single target damage um, it does have grit and it also has a pretty nasty rend as well so if you want to go more utility or you're, if you're in a single target fight uh, armor break, armor breaker might be better but I do like the sort of knockdown that you get from uh, wrecking ball and again we've got another fortify here to make us very tanky shockwave and clear out are there because they again provide some fortify for our teammates it's another form of cc and shockwave is our, like a great taunt ability so we do only have one taunt of the warhammer this time but that should be more than fine because we also have our two taunts on the flail and shield talking about taunts going over to the equipment that we're running for this one we still have the lost stopwatch here so the lost stopwatch has steady gaze we talked about this um with the warhammer and the sword and shield so we won't go over it again but effectively we don't need to run carnelian gems in our weapons is what it comes down to all of our taunts will now actually taunt uh without even needing a carnelian gem which is pretty Pretty cool uh, we should be able to see this here uh, okay, no, it's not gonna it's not gonna show the effect, but yeah, taunts are now active on our ability on our weapons without even needing a taunt gem, so we can run something else to give us more damage. I've opted to go for a diamond, assuming we can stay at full health, which we should be able to in this build um, if we're standing in sacred ground because we have such a massive damage reduction. Uh, but you could also go for an opal as well, or you got to bear in mind that losing your stamina while you have the wall is going to be kind of tricky, so you have to lose your stamina while switching to the warhammer to dodge, and then you get the bonus damage from the opal that way. Opal, of course, for those of you not familiar, uh, basically increases your damage when your stamina is not full. But Diamond is my recommendation uh, for there, but we're skipping ahead because gems are supposed to be later on in the video. 
Um, Odo is a pretty cool artifact. We're going to be rocking this here. It's got on block heal for 5% base health. And I don't think there's a cooldown written like on this one. So you can just block, 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 block. So if you hold up the block, you're just going to heal for so much. And I do believe that healing is increased while you're standing in sacred ground. So pretty bonkers. Life stealing is another perk that's always present on Odo. So we heal for 7.1% of the damage you deal. Refreshing move for some cooldown reduction. Odo's punishment sadly is a perk that isn't really too exciting. We only really have one stun here with the shockwave, but and it only kicks it like the problem is as soon as you hit an enemy it breaks the stun but uh it does work on both weapons so it's it's a small thing but it's not as exciting as uh maybe like the the perks that we get on a spark of mjolnir for example as we mentioned we do have an artifact flail so we can't have an artifact warhammer so instead we've opted to go for sundering clear out giving a 25 percent rend Thwarting Strikes and Refreshing Move. I think the two most important perks here are Thwarting Strikes and Sundering Clear Out, Refreshing Move. Just, you know, a nice little extra, but you could go for Keen, Vicious, Keenly Empowered, Hated, whatever sort of perk floats your boat there, you could rock it on that one. Obviously, we got the wall. We talked about this. Now, one thing with the wall, if you are going to rock it in this build, is Fortifying Shield Rush isn't going to do anything. So I'd recommend replacing that Fortifying Shield Rush at the Gypsum Kiln, which again, we'll go over at the end of the video with Crowded Bludgeon. It says if two or more targets are hit with the Warding Bludgeon, which is um, this ability here, then uh, it knocks the cooldown quite a bit. It knocks it down to about a 10 second cooldown um, if we put the Warding Bludgeon over the replace of Fortifying Shield Rush. Armor is fairly similar to what we had in our first tank build. Refreshing, Grit Ward, and Health. Again, trying to stack four refreshing pretty good. Grit Ward going to be great if we're 300 constitution for that 20% damage reduction if we have it across all four five pieces of armor. Health for the extra health pool. We've got the Sundering Shockwave uh, just to apply a little bit of extra rend with the Shockwave ability. More health, Grit Ward, and Refreshing. Again, if you had to knock it down to just two perks, make sure you have Grit Ward. Uh, probably try and get the four stacks of refreshing and then the health i guess is an extra benefit in this case same with this one here grit ward is going to be the priority perk and then uh health i guess would be the second most and then slash conditioning last i'm not even sure if we really like slash conditioning that much i just figured a lot of enemies do slashing damage but potentially replacing this with vigor or invigorated or some other perk that you prefer might be the better way to go. And again, we have uh, boots with the same sort of effect here also. Moving over to the jewelry, it is basically the same setup. Uh, we talked about this with the Sword and Shield and Warhammer. I think if the Despised perk is still in the game, because I'm not entirely sure. Unfortunately, crafting jewelry on the test server is a little bit weird. We don't really have access to great jewelry on the test server, so I kind of just have to take what I can get. Um, but I think replacing this Empowering Toast perk with Despised Refreshing Toast also being very important and then regenerating if you can get it also nice as well. But for two perk earring, I would just go Despised and Refreshing Toast. Same with the uh, ring here. It's not ideal, I think, in this build because the uh, the flail does so much striking damage. It is a strike damage based weapon. The Warhammer does strike damage. You definitely want to get striking damage on the ring. So hearty strike damage and then leeching is a great third perk or just keen as well. Uh, would also be pretty excellent. The Heart Rune of Choice for this build, just like with the uh, Mjolnir, is um, our good old Heart Rune of Stone form. But if you want to be a little bit more supportive, we still have the option to go for the Brutal Heart Rune of Grasping Vines for the Rending Vines and Enfeebling Vines. AoE Weaken and AoE Rend pretty awesome. If we want to do some more damage, we could go with the Firestorm or potentially even a Detonate if you're feeling very spicy. Just again, I think staying away from the new Heart Rune Primal Fury because we can't really do any of our tanking stuff when we're in Primal Fury mode. Moving over to gems for this build, the gems are basically identical to what we have with uh, the setup on the, the Warhammer build. So we're just looking to sort of like a one size fits all, Malachite and Diamond sort of balancing between the two to sort of keep our physical and elemental damage resistance is tied. So we're not anything that we're particularly weak against. But if you are once again going into a mutated expedition, um, if it's an Eternal Expedition uh, with, the, with the Void Mutation, then you want to make sure you're taking Void Damage Absorption. So slotting, again, Amethyst, and it would be Aquamarine for Ice. It would be Ruby Gems in your armor for Fire. And it would be Amber Gems in your armor if it was a Nature Mutation. And lastly, again, going into the PvP scenario, I'm expecting to see a lot of Thrust Damage Spears, Blunderbuss, Bows, Muskets. So Thrust Damage Absorption is obtained through the uh, Cut Pristine Emerald, I think is what it's called. So putting some emeralds in your armor. And also, you have to consider with the Lost Stopwatch, we, we do like to get that Protection perk. So you can uh, change Shirking Debilitating Cleanse for a Protection perk. If you're going to change it on the fly, uh, it's going to be hard because, you know, again, you don't want to be changing that Protection perk every time you go into a different sort of fight. So maybe... Switching out Lost Stopwatch for, uh, you know, having a collection of different amulets with health and void protection, health and fire protection, health and thrust protection. 
uh, that's one option, but we should be pretty good again because we have so much constitution and the, the grit ward also pro providing so much damage reduction as well. Weapon choice in the gems. Like I say, we don't need carnelians for PvE because uh, the... Uh, what is it called again? The Lost Stopwatch is providing the taunt gems. It's basically acting as though we have taunt gems in our weapons, which is pretty cool. So we just opted for some diamonds so we could do a little bit of extra damage while we're at full HP. A typical rotation for this ability, I think, would involve sort of uh, running past enemies. If you see an archer in the distance, maybe going for a cheeky dash over to them, landing on the archer, hoping that, you know, all the enemies are going to keep chasing you. Once everybody arrives here, I think popping uh, another taunt just to keep things safe, dropping the smite. Trying to fight in the smite if you can, and then switching over to the hammer, um, doing some hammer stuff. Uh, I think, honestly, the abilities in any order doesn't really matter too much. I, you probably want to be spending most of the time attacking with the flail, though. Um, flail is going to be our main weapon because we do have, obviously, the artifact flail. Uh, and we want to be getting value out of refreshing move and life stealing and also Odo's defense. So Warhammer is kind of a weapon that you switch to to drop a few abilities. And once those abilities are on cooldown, you don't really want to spend too much time attacking with the Warhammer. We're back in with the flail, doing flail stuff. Uh, trying to keep Smite down on your teammates. That was kind of weird. We aimed it there and Smite went over there. Uh, but you guys get the idea. Effectively, flail is our main hand weapon. Using your abilities kind of sparingly to, to rotate between taunts so you don't overlap taunts. And then Warhammer, just when the abilities are on cooldown, is kind of the way to go. And Stone Form to pop in a pinch, you know, if things are looking a bit dicey or whatever the heart rate you decide to go for. Moving over to the consumables, I think Banana Bread or Banana Parfait are probably something that you want to keep uh, on you uh, for when you're going into, you know, anything where you need some extra stats. So a, a difficulty, high difficulty dungeon or PvP. Um, either increased constitution or increased strength depending on what you're lacking on. Desert Sunrise is also something that you probably want to have active most of the time. A cheeky honing stone and then also having a ward potion depending on the dungeon that you're doing. So the Depths is a corrupted dungeon. Um, the newest dungeon in the game, Savage Divide, is Beast, so it's mainly beasts. If you're confused as to, you know, what damage type that you're going to be going against in a particular dungeon, which ward potion do you need and also which coating do you want to put on your weapon, I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, which sort of breaks down which dungeons have which enemies in them. So Ancients, for example, mainly uh, Lazarus is all Ancients, so you want to have the Ancient Coating on each weapon. Also, there's a strange thing that they've done where you have to drag the Coating to the equipment, uh, to your like hotbar down here. Again, hopefully this has changed from PTR to Live, and then apply it to both weapons, bearing that in mind. And then the same with the Honing Stone. You also have to put that on the hotbar, and then Honing Stone, like so and then changing it back. The other consumables I have in my hotbar, you might be curious at what these are. This is Oak Flesh Bomb. I think you make it in an outfitting station unless they changed it. Um, it increases absorption of physical damage by 35% for 20 seconds. And then there's also Gemstone Dust, which increases absorption of elemental damage. So this is probably better in PvP, I would say, and this is maybe more better for mutated dungeons. Obviously, we're also running uh, health potions and regen potions. Mana potions aren't needed for either of these builds. I don't know why they're on, there, on my hotbar. Uh, because we don't use mana in any way. Now, last thing, as promised, that we discussed in the video is how to change uh, perks on artifacts and stuff. So you just have to go to a gypsum kiln, basically, hit the craft button, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we're just going to go a little bit further up. And here's all of our artifacts here. So if we take a look at, uh, I don't know, what, what are we interested in? Let's take a look at this chest piece here. So the chest piece uh, perks that are on here by default, we have Magnify, Dark Reinforced, Enchanted Ward, and Physical Aversion. However, if we go into our inventory and find the same chest piece, you can see that it does have another perk down here, Nature Harnessing. And what effectively is happening here is this bottom perk on all of your items is random, or at least on all of your named items anyway. This is a random perk. So if we want to change Nature Harnessing to be something more useful, all we have to do is find the item and again if you know like you're like i don't see my item in the list it's probably because it's equipped to your character and in your gear sets so you have to make sure you take it off of the gear sets um like so and also unequip it from your character and then you should appear, see it appear in the list there's spark of mjolnir so if we want to change that bottom perk uh, all we have to do is choose the perk from in here um so let's put enchanted on it for example and then we hit craft you will need a weapon matrix you will need dark matter and you will need gypsum orbs um, for dark matter and stuff we'll cover this in a different video crafting video i'll have a link to that in the description down below or at the end of this video if you want to take a look at that obviously make sure you go subscribe to see those videos as well because we are going to have a lot of information coming out about new world to help you guys out uh, but effectively artifacts to recap we just take them to the gypsum kiln uh, make sure they're not equipped to your character and you should see the options to change them there. Now I'm aware that this video has gone pretty long. Um, so I think we're just going to link to a resource in the description down below, which shows you where you can get all of the artifacts. It's good old new world database. So I'll have a link to this website, like I say, in the description and you can just click on the item. So if we go and find Odo, for example, 
and then we go to dropped by and it shows you where Odo comes from. So Odo drops from Vanash and then you click on Vanash and it shows you where he is on the map. Now, by the time the expansions come out, <laughs> the first light or uh, Elysian Wild, sorry, will be filled in over here. Um, but he's effectively in a cave under there. And then again, we can just go back a little bit more and we can find a uh, spark of Mjolnir. We go here, dropped by Chardis. Chardis is in Lazarus, obviously. Um, final boss of Lazarus. So you guys get the idea. You just click on the artifact that you're interested in and it'll tell you where it comes from. Some of these items do come from uh, the battle pass or the season pass. They're on the free version though. So I think it says, yeah, season pass reward. Some of them do come from the PVP rewards track, but it should also tell you that as well. Um, so this one's dropped by Isabella. Michael is an example of something that comes from the PvP reward track. So yeah, uh, New World Database has got you covered for all the information as to where artifacts come from. Just ne need to simply like type in the item or click on it in the list and uh, you can find out where it drops from or if it comes from PvP rewards track, etc. Alright, that is going to do it for today's video, friends. Again, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you go ahead and click the like button. If you've got any of the suggestions for tank builds, drop them in the comments down below or if you've got any feedback or you want to see some of these tank builds in action, uh, we are going to be live streaming the expansion pretty much every single day for for the first two weeks at least so i'll put a link to the stream in the description down below click the subscribe button if you want to see more new world build guides and and content and uh, all of that other stuff we do have a lot of that coming up on the channel so subscribe for those and i'll see you guys all in the next video